Hello. Now we're going to read The Boy Who Switched Off the Sun, which is written by Paul Brown, illustrated by Mark O'Hanlon. Hopefully you can see that. Little Marcel didn't just like ice cream, he absolutely completely loved the stuff. Well, I mean kids, who can blame him? I personally love ice cream myself. In fact, he loved it so much he had secret stockpiles hidden in every corner of his house. With his toys? Where's that, do we think? On top of the wardrobe? In the washing machine? No, surely not. And here with his dog. And his dog seems to be called Mr. Whippy. Oh, that's my favorite, Mr. Whippy. He liked nothing more than enjoying a big delicious scoop while sat on his favourite bench by the beach. But there was a problem, a very big problem. The sun! Its hot, sweltering rays always turned his delicious frozen treat into a dripping mushy mess long before he could finish it. Oh, poor Marcel. Then from out of nowhere, he had an amazing idea. The sun was just like an enormous dazzling light bulb dangling in the sky. That's it, shouted Marcel. I'll just switch off the sun. But the sun was millions and millions of miles away. Marcel would need to build a super fast solar panelled space rocket if he was ever going to travel that far. So, after weeks of building, banging, drilling and clanging, He proudly added the finishing touch to his gleaming spacecraft. Wow, that is quite a gleaming spacecraft. I like the colours he's chosen. That night, Marcel was so excited he hardly slept a wink. Next morning, he leapt out of bed and ran down to prepare for launch. It was Perfect rocket flying weather. All systems are ready for liftoff, announced Marcel as the onboard computer began its countdown sequence. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! The powerful rocket blasted higher and higher through the clouds and into space. Up among the stars, he could see the Earth disappearing into the distance. Marcel thought it looked amazing, just like a great big fluffy scoop of bubble gum and pistachio ice cream. Well, I guess the pistachio is the land which is greenish and the bubblegum must have been the blue of the ocean. There you go, pistachio and bubblegum ice cream. What a funny combination flavour-wise. By the time they finally reached the sun, planet Earth seemed like a tiny dot floating Oh, <laughs> I jumped a different line. By the time they finally reached the sun, planet Earth seemed like a tiny dot in space. Marcel could see the giant off switch and quickly set to work. Floating closer and closer, he could feel the powerful heat washing over him 
and he wished he had some yummy ice cream to cool him down. Then he pushed and pushed with all his strength until, with one huge effort and a little help from his dog, Kalonk, Marcel switched off the sun. It worked. But as he set off for home, the sunlight fading fast and his solar-powered rocket began to run out of fuel, spiralling out of control. Luckily, Marcel managed to crash land safely back in his garden. Now, kids, there's a chance I read that wrong. I'm going to go ahead and read it again, just in case. But as he set off for home, the sunlight faded fast and his solar-powered rocket began to run out of fuel, spiralling out of control. Luckily, Marcel managed to crash land safely back in his garden. Phew, of all the places on earth he could have landed, it's a really good thing he landed in his garden. At night, very tired from his long journey, Marcel had lovely dreams about enjoying his favourite treat by the beach without it melting away. But when Marcel awoke the next morning, all was not well. It was still very dark and scary and far too cold to eat ice cream. And much worse than that, terrible things began to happen all around the world. News Express, flowers and forests dying. Daily Times, planets, animals in hiding. Evening Gazette, oceans in big freeze. Marcel realised he had made the biggest mistake of all time. He must switch the sun back on without delay. Oh no! But without the sun's energy, his solar-powered rocket just wouldn't work. He needed to think of a solution, and quickly. And there was one thing that always helped Marcel to think more clearly. Strawberry cheesecake ice cream! Of course! <laughs> of course Marcel needs ice cream! As he tucked into a supersized scoop, the idea suddenly struck him. He would build a giant catapult to fire an enormous ball of ice cream straight at the sun's on switch. Oh, great plan! Marcel worked late into the night, building a scoop the size of a house. It was so utterly enormous it used up his entire stockpile of ice cream, so he knew he would only have one shot at the sun. Only one shot. Let's hope it works. Finally, everything was ready. Crowds of people came from near and far, all desperately hoping that Marcel would be able to switch the sun back on. Commence countdown, he yelled. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! Everybody watched in wonder as the giant ball of deliciousness. Everybody, I'm really sorry, I've made a lot of mistakes during this one, haven't I, kids? Everybody watched in wonder as the giant ball of deliciousness hurtled towards the sun. Oh no, shouted Marcel. The ice cream was starting to melt as it zoomed towards the sun's dying heat. And as it got closer, and as it got closer, 
more and more just melted away until all that remained was a frozen scoop of Tutti Frutti. Then Tutti Everyone held their breath as a solid chunk of ice cream, as the solid icy chunk. <laughs> Will we get to the end of this book? That's the question. <laughs> Everyone held their breath as the solid icy chunk landed a direct hit at the sun's on switch. But nothing seemed to happen. Had Marcel's plan failed? Angry and disappointed, the crowd started to walk away. Then suddenly, the sky was filled with the brightest light anyone had ever seen. Hooray! Everyone cheered and ran, dancing into the streets. The next day, all around the world, everything began to return to normal. World's oceans defrost, animals come out of hiding, flowers and forests come alive. Phew. And although it was a drippy melting mess, Marcel was very happy to be sitting on his favourite bench eating his ice cream. And so was his dog. The end. Well, goodness, I'm so pleased he managed to get the sun back on again. That was a difficult read for me. I don't know why I just made an awful lot of mistakes. So I am very sorry, kids. I hope it didn't ruin it for you, but I really feel for Marcel. It must be awful to be the one that made such a huge mistake. And then to have let everyone down. But then it worked. I mean, thank goodness. But I guess that does happen sometimes, doesn't it? We do, we do make mistakes and then we do feel very bad about it. And it makes it worse when we've let the people down around us. And it's really important when we make mistakes not to pretend it didn't happen. Marcel could have very easily hidden in his home in the dark and let somebody else fix it. But instead, he came up with a solution and he could have pretended he was nothing to do with it. But instead, he obviously owned up to it because people knew that it was him because people came round his house to see him build his giant catapult. So I guess that's the take home from this story. First of all, ice cream is amazing. And secondly, if you make a mistake, it's okay. Just like I made loads of mistakes reading this book. It's okay to make a mistake. You just have to carry on and do your best to make things better. And keep persevering. Goodness, Marcel could have given up, but he didn't. And in the end, the sun switched back on again. Yay! That was a fun read. It was very unexpected. I did not expect the twists and turns in that story. I hope that you enjoyed it. You take care now and I'll see you again later. Bye.